What's up, everyone, and welcome to the 10th episode of our realm play here in the Mossy Reach. I'm your host, Omle Du. This episode is going to be all about path making and road building. I've also been working on my mega project, so here's a little bitty update of that before we jump into the video. I'm really enjoying this project. Like, watching this area evolve is just so cool, and it's turning out so nice. But it's also nice to work on community things, make the world a better and safer place, keep us safe from all the zombies and creepers and other scary nonsense. So I've been a road building and thought I might share some of the methodology behind my madness. So I like to start off by just marking where the road is going to be with a shovel. Always remember you can erase roads with a hoe if need be. Once you have your road basically figured out, it's time to dig it up. Clear out some area so that you can replace it with the blocks of your choice. I would recommend using one block for the center of your road. So in this case, we're using tough. And so first off, just go down and where the center of the road is going to be, just start placing your center block. And try not to worry about it. You know, just get blocks placed and you can always change things later on. Once you get a bunch of your center block placed, clear out a little more area around it so that you can place in accent blocks. For these accent blocks, you want them to be like the same color as your center block. So in this case, since our center block is tough, we're going to be using like cobblestone and stone bricks, things like that. Don't worry about trying to evenly distribute your accent blocks either. You know, like it's nice to have like clusters, you know, have some areas that have lots of mossy stone bricks off to one side or, or some areas that have lots of cobblestone. Um, and also, you know, work with the environment. You know, if, if one side of the road feels more vegetative, you know, add some mossy variation over there. Or if there's already some mossy cobblestone, throw in some mossy bricks next to it. You know, it, it's nice to have, like, clusters of similar things. In my experience, texture can get a little crazy, so it's nice to have these kind of cohesive parts. You know, like little clusters of things or having a center block. In between each step, be sure to walk down your road to change things that you don't like. You know, if your central block doesn't look centralized or if some of your accent blocks look too strong you know now is the time to tweak those things now it's time to install an outline block so this should be a different color than the rest of the blocks um, and it should be relatively solid on the outside you want it to kind of contain your road Next up, we need to work with the elevation. So build a couple of really tiny statues, like light poles or something. Have one of them go down into the ground and the other one go like up into the air. I would pick one of your designs and have it be the predominant design. Like, so we're gonna pick this design and we're gonna build this one like every 20 blocks or so on each side of the road. And when it comes to ridges, be sure to push them back a little bit. Remember that roads are rivers for people. You know, so people walking up and down this ridge, they're going to displace some of the dirt. You know, they're going to kick it and move a rock. You know, so also be sure to build some statues to, like, hold the dirt there. You know, it makes it look less awkward um, and more, like, realistic. Just remember that, that roads are like rivers for people. They always take the path of least resistance. And they kind of wear down, you know, the, the terrain as they go. Also remember that if you put pathways up against something, you'll be able to see the block next to the pathway. You know, so be sure to take the time to like remove dirt or weird nonsense if you're gonna have pathways up against things. It just adds an extra layer of detail and it looks really clean when all is said and done. Another place you can be fancy are forks in the road. Make a larger version of your current statue designs so that it stands out while still fitting in. Keep in mind that these statues, lampposts, and road markers are a part of the road as well, so take your outliner block and be sure to connect them to the rest of their friends. Then whatever fence post or walls you used for your tiny statues, throw in some of those just on the side of the path. A little fence post here, a little wall there, you know, try to work with the environment, just go with what makes sense. Uh, bring in some of your alternative statues to add details and elevation differences to your road. And also remember that this is a push and pull kind of thing. You know, first put too many fence posts, then go back and remove half of them. Next up, use stairs and slabs to create some more texture and elevation differences. You know, make it look like there's a brick missing here, or there's like a hole in the side of the road. You know, that's why the road went around it. You know, try to justify some of your fence posts or some of the, the terrain geography. You know, that's like someone built this fence post because there was rough terrain here. You know, they didn't want their grandma to like trip and fall when they were visiting them. It's these details that really help attach this road 
road to the rest of the world. You know, rather than just cutting through the world, you can really make it feel like it's it's a part of the world. Especially with like ridges, you know, be sure to put like like slabs near the ridges to help justify why the dirt is just floating there. Build holes behind fence posts. And, and be sure to texture your holes, you know, keep in mind that there's like mossy variations and, and smooth stone and all kinds of stuff that you can use to make it look, you know, natural. And remember to use your outliner block to connect all the things back to the road. Bone meal can make it look more natural as well. You can like overgrow the areas where people aren't supposed to be. You might need to go back and clean up some of the grass and flowers, but it looks really nice. It also goes good with ponds. You can fill in the holes you've already made or make some brand new ones from scratch. This also gives you an opportunity to play with the plants in the game, both the ones that are supposed to be planted and artificial ones using like fence posts and leaves. And from here, it's just about bigger and bigger details. You know, I like building these wall structures out of the stripped logs of the fence posts that I've been using. Um, and then the, the wall of the, you know, blocks that I've been using. Then you can make it look aged by, by poking holes in it and switching out some of the textures to make it look cracked and, and placing some slabs on the ground to make it look like the pieces have, have fallen off the wall and are laying on the ground and, and just have fun with it. You know, like that's the nice thing about roads is that you can build, you know, little fishing huts or, or little places to hang out with your friends or just random walls for no reason. And that's the beauty about road building, is it's more about just the aesthetics rather than the functionality. You know, you don't need it to be 100% safe. You know, sometimes you want to fly away or run away from your major projects. You know, you can get burned out, but then just take a break and build like a giant tree for no reason. You know, it's really nice. And then the giant tree is a part of the pathway. You know, it's, it's all connected. You know, like, is, is there a hill that doesn't make sense? You know, just put some stone through it. So it's like that stone is holding the dirt there. Plus, you know, roads are designed to bring people closer together. You know, so that's always a good, happy thing. You know, kind of like this video was designed to be a road from me to you. So if you've made it to this point in the video, be sure to let me know what you think or know or feel. You know, tell me in the comments. Talk to me there. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you've already subscribed, thank you so much for continuing this journey with me. I love sharing my progress and thinking up tips and tricks and and, and making art time lapses in redstone tutorial videos, but I can't keep doing it unless y'all enjoy it too. So let me know what you think or what you would like to see in the future, and I will try to accommodate and, and make my videos the most enjoyable that they can be. One last thing before we wrap this video up, don't be afraid of, of making transitions. You know, change up the wood or change up some of the designs, just do it slowly. Simply allow some of the original pathway blocks and designs to bleed into the new pathway. This will help smooth the transition into your new path, and you can just keep doing that until it's completely different if you want to. Or you can just change a few of the colors and keep a lot of your designs the same, and it'll still feel like it's a branch off of its parent road. But that's all we got for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed hearing my tips and tricks on road building and pathway designing. I've been your host, Omledu, hopefully teaching you a survival trick or two, and reminding you that until next time, stay safe and have fun. Bye-bye.